Welcome back to Empowerment of Faith Kingdom Center for Ambassadors. I am Elder Tori, and I am excited to be here, to be back, to be able to minister once again on this platform. Uh, and if you've been keeping up with us, you guys, you know that there is, we have prayer school, we have teaching going up on Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I definitely encourage you guys to be sure to tune in with us, but not only tune in with us, be sure to like and share our videos. So with that being, well, I shouldn't say our videos, but the teaching that is going forth. So with that being said, I am really excited to be back tonight and be able to minister in the area of holiness. And so one thing that I am, when I first, um, you know, heard this, this topic in my spirit, I was just like, man, that, that's, that's a big topic. And as I was spending time meditating, making my PowerPoint, one thing that, uh, that was illuminated to me is that, you know, holiness, teaching holiness is not a, like big as in, whoa, can't handle it. The Holy Spirit can handle anything. But it's big to a culture, a world that we live in that does not value holiness or does not represent holiness or a lifestyle of holiness. And so as we get, as like I said, I'm going to be talking about holiness on this evening. And so we're, that being said, um, just want to thank Dr. Larry for this opportunity for allowing me to be here. And also just want to take a moment to pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for allowing me to be here. And uh, I covenant with you, Heavenly Father, that I don't fall short. I go beyond the ability that you have supplied, Holy Spirit, and that I minister exactly what you have in the authority of your we Christ. So we're going to, we are going to go ahead and jump right in. And like I said, we're going to talk about holiness. Am I holy? And so that's the big question for us to ask ourselves, you know, am I as an ambassador, as I'm, am I living out a lifestyle of holiness? Am I being a representative of the kingdom of heaven? You know, scripture says, be holy because I am holy. Am I living that out in my life? And so one thing that scripture tells us is that uh, we need to evaluate ourselves. We need to look at ourselves and see what we're doing. And if we're not living out our life, if we're an ambassador and we're doing something wrong, the father will correct us. He corrects those he loves, but we can always make sure that we uh, take some self-evaluation for ourselves. Okay, so one thing, Miss um, I want to uh, address some misconceptions on holiness or a lifestyle of holiness. And so one thing is that what is holiness and why is it important? So that's something that we're going to talk about this evening particularly. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but being born again, doesn't that make me holy? Well, you know, being born again gives us the access. You know, there's a life, much more of a life after being born again. Um, only certain people are holy, like ministry leaders, pastors, um, evangelists, whatever. Well, I shouldn't say whatever, but only certain people are holy. Well, that's not true. That's not true. If you are an ambassador, you're called to be holy. You're called to live a lifestyle of holiness. You're in a position to be holy. Um Another thing is God is still working on me. I'm under construction. This is something that I don't know if people still say it, but it was something that used to be said quite a bit. And so the father, if he's still working on you, are, are, are you are you sure you hold it? If he's still working on you, are you sure you're born again? Because he's done, you know? So it's and, and really it's, it's an excuse. So we'll talk about that too. We're covered by grace. Okay, yes. As ambassadors, we do have grace, but it's not the grace that the grace teaching that religion has taught us. See, religion teaches us that I can do whatever I want, and by grace, I'm I'm covered, I, I'm okay, but that's not what the kingdom teaches. The kingdom teaches us that grace gives me the ability to keep the law, okay? And laws are important when it comes to holiness, so we'll talk about that um worldly holiness you know there are a lot of ideas that surround holiness i mean depending on what time frame you were born in if you were born based on the world not the kingdom the kingdom definition of holiness what the kingdom defines as holiness does not change and so what i mean by worldly worldly holiness changes depending on trends and religion you know, the trends that were popular back in the 1920s are not the trends that are popular now. 
And so the definition of holiness could have looked completely different then than it does now. You know, as the world, it, depending on what religion you're in, you could be a Jew. And Jews have their own, the, the religion of Judaism, I should say that. They have what they define as holiness. Muslims have what they define as holiness. Christians have what they define as holiness. And so, but the father, really the only definition that matters is the father's definition of holiness. And so there's so many ideas that swarm around holiness. So we have to make sure that we have the right idea. There's another idea. Well, God understands my heart. Well, if God understands your heart, he understands your intentions behind making even making that statement. And the thing is, is that we want to live out holiness in our lives. We don't want to make excuses. And holiness doesn't make excuses for us. You know, religion, uh, religious ideas have taught us to make excuses as to why we can't live holy or why we can't do that. But the scriptures never tell us that. Um, another thing, Another thing we hear is, we are all sinners saved by grace. You, how can you be a sinner and holy at the same time when the Holy Spirit cannot dwell where there is sin, okay? And so there's another, that's so religious, we don't have to do all that. Well, what does the, what does the Father require of you? If everything, if keeping the word of the, of, if keeping the word, living up the word in our lives, living a lifestyle of holiness, if that's too much, then what do you, then what you gonna keep? <laughs> I mean, it, it has to make sense. So these are some things, some ideas that we hear around holiness, that we hear about religion, that people mix together. Because many times people will mix the things that they do for their churches or mix religious ideas and concepts or mix um, things like just like just um, dressing modest. Well, I wouldn't say modest, but dressing where you're not showing any flesh they will say that that is holiness but the thing is is that as ambassadors see we're told to be holy because i am holy and you do because you be right so we'll talk more about that so before we really get into holiness and defining what holiness is and and actually seeing what holiness looks like the first thing that we have to make sure that we understand is laws what are laws? Well, the first thing is that laws govern the kingdom. So everything in the kingdom go is governed by laws. So we have to understand that. And there is this teaching that is out here that's saying that we don't live by, we, no, the law has passed, that's what it is, I'm sorry. That the law has passed, that we're no longer under the law. Well, I'm sorry to say this, I'm sorry if I have been the first person to tell you guys this, but you're living under some type of law, whether you know it or not. If you are a citizen in America, America has laws. The father sets his word above him, so he doesn't even violate his laws that he set. You're sure when he was here in the earth, he lived by the laws that were set. And so we definitely have to make sure that we get that understanding because, um, let's, 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 let's look, let's go back to our notes. So we have to understand what laws are to make sure that we to so that we know why they are important. So laws are precepts established in commands, principles written in oral. So laws are there. The laws aren't changing. Laws are instructions, decrees, and statutes. So laws are going to govern our life. They are going to tell us how to live. They are, I mean, holiness is a law in itself. And so it's so important that we make sure that we understand what a law is and make sure that as we come into the knowledge of the kingdom that we're not breaking those laws because the thing is, is that laws uphold other laws. And so when we are operating and we are enacting laws in our life, the thing is, is that the laws can work for us or they can work against us. And it doesn't matter if we're ignorant of those laws. If we violate laws, we're going to get the punishment of it. But if we, even if we're ignorant and we act laws that are good, we're going to get the benefit of that. So it's important to make sure that we understand that everything is governed by laws. Okay. So let's look at this scripture right here. It's in Matthew 5, 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So right here, Yeshua never said I came to get rid of them. See, 
and not that I'm trying to go too far into it because Dr. Lee has already taught it, but there were the law of the elders, the traditional, the religious, the traditional law of the elders, the religious and ceremonial laws. Um, and, and then there's the laws of the kingdom. And so many of those laws and those traditions were set in place because the people were so rebellious that they needed guidelines. And so the laws that are that were relevant then and relevant now are the kingdom law. And so when Yeshua came into the earth, see if we even think about it, Yeshua was able to come into the earth because of laws. The father didn't say, oh, poof, Yeshua, you're going down to the earth and I need you to do this. He even, he still had to um, go through the laws of being birthed through a woman. He still had to go through the laws. Even when he walked on water, Yeshua didn't walk on water, he walked on laws. And so that's why it's important for us to understand that everything in the kingdom is governed by laws even to the point of um him being crucified everything was based on a law you know so it's important that we make sure that we understand that Yeshua didn't get rid of those laws he came to fulfill them he sure himself operated under those laws that's why he was able to do so much stuff that's why he was able to offer us the gift of salvation so that we can receive that and so it's important that we make sure we understand that he didn't make his own law or become his own religion. He still, once again, submitted himself to the laws that were already here, already governing the kingdom. Okay, so right here it says, for I come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of the one who sent me. So not only, even if we look at this, there's a lot of laws in this. There's a law of obedience. There is the law of submission. That's how he was able to get things done because he understood the law. I mean, also, as we look at it, it's the law of scholarship. It's a, a prayer. It's a lot of things, even in this one verse, that shows us that laws are here. Laws are operating. And as ambassadors, it's important for us to understand what laws are and making sure that we are submitted to them. Okay, so we... We must still obey laws in order to receive the benefits, okay? And so the reason why I mentioned this before we even get to, before we even start talking about holiness is because it's important for us to understand as we, as we have knowledge that everything in the kingdom is governed by laws, there's also a law of holiness. Holiness isn't just standing around, you know, kind of doing its own thing. The laws uphold other laws. And so we have to make sure that as ambassadors, there's a lot of governing everything that we do. So before we, our next point, before we even talk about, talk about holiness, one thing is how did I become holy? Well, one thing is that we have to realize is that, well, I'll stop saying we, um, is that we, as ambassadors, ambassadors must change the mindset. And so one thing is, how do I become holy? Well, at first it starts with the mind. You know, yes, we get born again. That gives us access to the kingdom. That gives us access to, that even puts us, it restores us to our place of righteousness. And it puts us in a position to live a lifestyle of holiness. But it's a step that we have to go through. We have to make an exchange in our belief system. So what I have here are the six stages of conformity. So we got a precept that comes from the original idea. So one thing about precepts is that, or ideas, uh, well, ideas, I should say, is that ideas can come from a source of light or it can come from a source of darkness. And so that idea uh, is a precept. It is It becomes our conception. So that becomes a thought. So we get an idea. Okay, this is the idea. Then it becomes a thought. Once it's a thought, uh, or it's a precept once it becomes a concept it becomes a conviction okay so convictions are a set of belief uh, a conviction once we have a set of convictions we have a belief system so we have all of these ideas that have come together we put them in our in our in our belief system our think tank we accept them as being true see the thing is we can reject ideas just as we reject uh, many people reject the I reject the kingdom just like we re just like as ambassadors, we re we reject ideas and thoughts that come from darkness because they don't align with with the kingdom. Just as we make the decision make the decision to reject, you also have to make the decision to accept. So if you have a bad precept 
that has turned into a concept that has created your convictions, your belief system, you accepted them as being truth, and now you're living out of that. You have to, we have, it must be understood that it started with a precept that was accepted by me, just as if I accepted a precept that was from the dark, that was from the kingdom, that was from life. I give an example of this is that even with dressing, you know, I used to dress a certain way before I came, before the words started going forth and I made that exchange in my belief system. And I remember I came home one day and once that word started going forth, I came home and just, I told my husband, I was like, I'm throwing all of these away. I'm not wearing this anymore. I was like, I don't care if I got to wear the uh one, the same pair of pants every single day, but I'm not wearing these anymore. But because I, I wanted to replicate, I wanted to represent the father, the word came forth and I made an exchange in my belief system. I threw out the old ideas that I have of, of dressing and I accepted, I agreed with the thoughts of the kingdom and that changed my lifestyle. See, my lifestyle didn't change until I went all the way back to that first precept. I identified what I was doing was wrong. I identified that original thought didn't, didn't align with kingdom. And I replaced it with a thought that aligned with kingdom. And I and it became my concept. It became my conviction. It got into my belief system. I accepted it as being true. And, that, and it changed my life because it changed my actions. And I say that to say is that even as ambassadors desiring to live a lifestyle of holiness, we have to make sure that we're always cleaning out that belief system. Because I mentioned at the very beginning, there are many ideas of holiness there are many ideas and con misconceptions i should say on holiness but uh, if it does not align with the word it's darkness and so you can't be holy if you got dark in you it, it, it doesn't work you can't mix you can't compromise and that's something that we are going to talk about so i'm going to pump the brakes on that so um let's look at our scripture reference right here it says therefore i urge you brothers and sisters and view of El's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to El. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, again, this supports uh, the six stages of conformity of making that exchange, renewing our minds with the word, because you can renew your mind with darkness and you'll still live a lifestyle of darkness. So we got to make sure that we're putting in the word. So as we are designed to live out a holy lifestyle, so you can't live out a holy lifestyle. The one I mentioned, you can't live out a holy lifestyle if you're sin, but you can't live out a lifestyle if you don't even know the word. But we'll get into that. So in our next reference, reference is, as a man think in his heart, so is he. So if you put bad in, you're going to get bad out. If you're putting good, well, let me rephrase that. If you're putting bad in and you're receiving it, your lifestyle is going to show it. But if you're putting good in and you're receiving it, your lifestyle is going to show it because you do what you think. You can't, you can't operate, you can't live out a life that you don't think about, you know? So even if it's a habit, it's a habit that we thought about, but we live it out. So as a man thinking in his heart, that's what he does. And so that's why it's so important to make sure that we're always checking our belief systems, making sure we're making it exchange so our minds can be reflective of kingdom, but also so that we can live out a holy lifestyle, okay? So we talked about um, laws. We, we laid a foundation of what laws are. We laid a foundation of making sure that we are making an exchange in our belief system so that we can receive holiness and live it out. So we talked about all of that. Well, what's holiness? Okay, so we're going to talk about that now. Well, one thing is that holiness is a law. Okay, scripture tells us to be holy for I am holy. And so one thing is that I want to make sure that I point out in this is that it doesn't say do holy. It doesn't say do this and you'll be holy. It says be holy for I am holy and so one thing is that we have to realize that ambassadors for one we can't make ourselves holy we can't it's nothing even our 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 best is the equivalent to filthy rags to filthy rags and even you can follow everything in the word and you can do you can you can go through the motions and you can do things that are holy you can um let me okay 
it doesn't matter. You do because you are. So the reason why you live by the law, you keep the law, you do what the word says is because you are holy. But at the same time, you can keep all the laws, but if there is no willing and obedience, there is no submission, there's no, you're not, you're not in the position of holiness. You, it doesn't matter. So I, I do holiness because I am holy. Okay. So there are, and there are many people that are sitting in churches and, and they think they have a form of holiness, but they just going through the motions. They could be sitting in the church every single Sunday and don't even know what the pastor has said. And so one thing is that holiness is a law. You be holy for I am holy. Holiness is special. It's separate. And so the thing about holiness is that holiness, it looks different. You know, there is, when you live out of life, when you are being, when being holy and because you are holy, you're doing, you're living out a lifestyle of holiness, you're going to look different. Yes, people are going to look at you. You are going to stick out like a sore thumb. Is and, and that is 100% on purpose because if the father's not shining through you and as an ambassador, if you are more so aligning with the trends, you can't, see, holiness needs to be seen. And so, yes, that's the reason why holiness sticks, sticks out like a sword throne. If you're living a lifestyle of holiness, you're special, you're separated, you don't want to blend in. And the thing, and what I think about when I think about holiness and when I think about what it looks like, I think about a person who's come to this country, we're here in America, who comes to this country and they keep their customs of their country. They may wear a head wrap or they may dress differently than what Americans do. But what that does is that it draws attention. You may look at the person and say, hmm, clearly they're not from this country or hmm, they have a different culture. They have different customs that they practice. And that should be the same thing as holiness. Because when we live out of holiness, we operate. See, when we look at our definition, it tells us that we're special, you're separated. And people need to see holiness. Because holiness reflects the Father. See, it says to be because I am. When we're reflective of him, people see him. So holiness is important. You never, if you're blending in with the world and nobody ever questions you or nobody ever is like, oh, or say something to you like you holier than now or you don't have to do all that, you may want to take self-evaluate because it's going to look different. You're going to be separate. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing because it's bringing, um, it's bringing attention to the Father. See, we don't bring attention to ourselves. We bring attention to the Father. And we, and we assimilate to the culture of the world. We bring attention to the world. But we, as, as we live out holy, as we live out a holy lifestyle, we want to bring attention to the Father. So let's look at this word in the Hebrew. And it's spelled kaf dalit shin. So that kaf is what follows the established word, purpose, intent. Dalit, access, keys, or authority. Uh, and then Shem, which is the inherited son, be, being totally consumed by the inheritance of the son. So when we look at holiness in the Hebrew, it's what follows being consumed by the authority that gives access. So the thing is, is that when we are living out a lifestyle of holiness, we're so consumed, so connected to the father, is that his, his authority automatically dominates in our life. Because the thing is, is that we can, you can program yourself to live right, just like you can program yourself to live wrong. And so uh, another meaning for holiness is what follows the threshing. And so if we look at our scripture reference here, his winnowing fork in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering up the wheat into the barn and burning up the shaft with unquenchable thirst. And this is uh, unquenchable fire, sorry. Uh, and this is Matthew Yahoo 317. So that shaft, in this case, which would be the sin, is being pushed out. So when we're consumed by the Father, we're consumed by that spiritual authority that's given us access, that sin is going to be pushed out of our lives. And so as a result, we can operate as we can operate and we can be holy. We can be holy because I because the Father. We can operate this law, be holy because I am holy. And you will be separated. 
you will be special. You will operate with oneness. And you won't be a hypocrite anymore. Because one thing about holiness is that it's the same all the time. We mentioned earlier, we mentioned, we mentioned earlier is that depending on what religion you're in, depending on what time frame you could have been born in, the definition of holiness will change. But the father's his word says, I'm Yahweh and I change not. So if you are holiness, you're gonna be one all the time. You're not gonna be fake. You're not gonna be hypocrite. Once you're living out that lifestyle of holiness. You're going to be one. And that is a good thing. Because one thing is that you're sure people, people love to say, oh, well, you sure hung out with sinners. He did, but he was still one. He still operated in the holiness. See, when he went around, the sinners changed. A, a lot of these people that are using that scripture, they're changing when they go around the sinners and the sinners got more influence than they do. And so we definitely have to make sure that we are living it out, changing our belief system, getting, making sure because we don't, like I said, we don't make ourselves holy, but because of the laws that have been set in place, because of what you sure did, we can, and we are in the position to be holy. And so now it's time for us to make sure we live out that lifestyle. So we've talked about it, what is holiness. And so let's talk about a little bit of what that looks like. And so, um, one thing is that first and foremost, how do I be holy? You got to be born again. Again, religion has so many ideas of holiness. Religion will tell you you can go out and drink and 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 have sex and and lie lie to everybody you know and still sit in church and they say you oh you still holy you still good. Mm, you you got some repenting to do. What you did was not holy. You know, uh, so scripture tells us if you have, I think it's in Galatians five twelve. I'm, I'm, I'm I think. But it tells us that if you keep those things, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. And so why would religion teach that, oh, you can still do these things and go to heaven. You can still do these things and go and be holy. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't mix. And so um, one thing is that you got to be born again. You're sure. Once again, was that access. And one thing that we have to realize that when it comes to holiness, see, we're connected to the Father. He's our source. So if he's holy, that means we can 100% be holy. We're not holy out of what we did. We're not holy because I keep all these laws. Just like um, in, in Matthew, when Yeshua was talking, in Matthew 23, when Yeshua was talking to the Pharisees with the seven woes, reading when you get a chance, they were doing a lot of things that was like presented this idea this uh image of holiness but they weren't holy they were not holy so even if you 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 can dress where the only thing that's showing is the top of your head is the top of your eyelids and you can still not be holy because you're focused on the doing you do because you are so um i'm gonna skip some of this because of my time but one thing is that i really want to make sure that we um want to make sure that it's addressed is a thing it's, it's compromise there's do not compromise there's way too much compromising going on so when you compromise you cut off the power and the anointing of working in your life and so this one thing that i just mentioned is that we're not holy because of anything we did we're holy because of yeah, because uh because we're born again we're holy because we've been put in that position to be holy so one so we so, in, so compromising, see, holiness is 100% pure. And the word tells us you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and drink the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and table of demons. That is Olive Corinthians 10, Corinthians 10 tw uh, 21 through 22. You cannot compromise. You cannot, I think, uh, I can't remember which elder used it, but someone says it all the time, that if you have a cup of water and you put a speck of dirt in it, it's automatically dirty. It's not It's not pure anymore. So holiness, the Holy Spirit can't dwell where there's sin. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit ain't going to dwell, not going to dwell in the hypocrite. So if there is some hypocrisy going on in your life, if there's some hypocrisy going on in my life, just you talking to myself, yeah, I need to first repent, own up to that and get it out because that's not holy. The thing is, is that the holy holiness is one. Holiness does not change. The so holiness does not change because, oh, now there's a trend to walk around with your left butt cheek hanging out 
and, and people are saying that's cool. No, the father never said that's cool and the, or fashionable, I should say. And so holiness has its own pattern, just as the world has its own pattern. So we have to make sure that as ambassadors that we're continuing to live out a lifestyle that is pleasing to the father because we always want to offer, we don't want to break that law of holiness. We don't want to cut that anointing off in our life because it's important that people see the light in us. And as and one thing is that, um, and I'm not going to go to it, even with the Pharisees and everything that, that they did, Yeshua flat out said, I'm just trying to make sure I get it right, do as they say, but don't do as they do. Because yes, what they were saying was right, but they weren't doing it. So, and they, they had this image of holiness, but they weren't holy. And the Holy Spirit isn't fake. The Holy Spirit isn't a hypocrite. The Father isn't a fake. He isn't a hypocrite. He's the same. Imagine if the Father changed. You wouldn't even know. It's like, it, it would be questionable. How do I even approach the Father if he's changing all the time? And so that's one thing that's special about a holy and special about being ambassadors. Once we live out, um, live out the law of holiness, we can be one all the time. And when we're one all the time, not only do people know what they're getting, but the Father knows that he can depend on us. He knows that he can use us. The Holy Spirit can speak through us. But we have to make sure that we're not compromising. We have to make sure that we're not mixing, not allowing any of that in our lives. Just like not only the seven woes, but the seven churches. There was only one church that the Father was pleased with. And the church that was neither hot nor cold, he said, I'll spit you out my mouth. And so we don't want to be hypocrites. We don't want to have this idea of holiness. We don't want to be um, self-appointed <laughs> um, holiness. And so one more thing that I want to point out before we leave, because I am out of time, is that, let me go back to it. Pull my slide back up. Uh -oh. okay. is what holiness is not holiness is not compromising and mixing the father doesn't compromise Yeshua doesn't compromise neither should we if we're going to live out a lifestyle of holiness don't mix the whole uh the, Holiness does not change. It does not change. The father isn't flaky. He isn't, well, you know, this worked this time, but you know, they change it now. So we're going to do this. The father doesn't change according to the people's will. He doesn't change according to trends. He stays the same. And so we need to do the same thing, making sure that we're not changing. Uh, holiness does not make excuse for weakness. We have dominion, you know, and the word never says, oh, you should never say, oh, I'm not perfect. Oh, you shouldn't have said, oh, I make mistakes sometimes. No, no. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. It doesn't make excuses. See, because we live out, I can do all things. That's what scripture tells us. I can, I can, as an ambassador, I can dominate. There's no weakness in me. Scripture says I'm bold as, I'm a bold as a lion. So, and the thing, if you're going to be holy, if you're going to live out a lifestyle of holiness, you're going to be holy because the Father, because you, be holy because I'm holy. You got to have boldness about you. Yeshua was bold. He had to be bold. Everything that he went through, the, the religious people, the persecution, everything that he went through, but he was able to do it. I mean, look at who his source was. But when you, but my point in saying that is that when we live out a lifestyle of holiness, there's no excuse for weakness. It, and I'm not saying that things won't get difficult, but you're not weak. And so again, holiness isn't about doing. You can, you can keep Every single every single rule that you want, you can do everything right. But again, we don't do anything to make ourselves holy. Um, and then lastly, which is probably the most important, um, holiness is not fake and it's not being a hypocrite. And so that is all the time that I have today. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you ever want to know more about the ministry or you want to partner with us, um, there's information after this video we would love to have you and lastly I want to invite you to I want to invite you to the kingdom as well so
So we thank you for taking the time out to listen, to listen, and we hope you will come back and join us. So join us. I can't get my words out. We hope you will come back and join us once again. Shalom, y'all.